Everything Everywhere All at Once is a drama, action, and comedy film that has been written and directed by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shanehart, which we collectively known as the Daniels. When an interdimensional rupture unravels reality, an unlikely hero must channel her newfound powers to fight bizarre and bewildering dangers from the multiverse as the fate of the world hangs in the balance. This doesn't feel like an A24 film. Now, me being an A24 huge fanatic, I know that A24 is known by making films and throwing things in front of your face when it comes to you being shocked by the suspense building up and just you knowing the concept and the premise of the A24 films and you being mind blown of what is unexpected by you watching their movies. But at the same time, their movies feel like A24. The picture, the atmosphere, the cinematography, the production, you name it, it feels like A24. But this movie doesn't feel like A24 at all. With everything, the pacing, the cinematography, the dialogue, the chemistry. I, it's, it's like A24 was a little bit tired of them being slow paced and they want to have like a more of a wild approach to this film. And honestly, they've done a good job. Now, when I was looking at reviews of this film, I've seen mostly positive reviews. But I noticed a lot of critics, especially mainstream critics, didn't really point out certain issues of this movie that needed to be addressed. But at the same time, they was focused, they was more focused on the good aspects of this film so you can watch it. And I'ma have to agree on the most part of what they was mentioning, and especially when it comes to the comparison of the multiverse of madness, the Marvel film that has been produced by Disney. I have to say this is way better, this is way more polished, and actually this is what the Multiverse of Madness should have been if they was not pussyfooting around, not adding an R-rated title to the film, and adding agenda tropes to it. Now, at the same time, this movie gives you that Multiverse of Madness feels, it's mixed with, it's mixed with all different things so it can pull you away from the Marvel franchise, but when it comes to the hero tropes, when it comes to certain aspects of action, in the predictions of scenarios when it comes to the enemy's plot and how things being fall in place they do it they do it frequently and what i mean by that is is that they add aspects for you to think it's marvel but they show you that they can do it way better by them having an r-rated title to it and being wild wacky and out of the loop with it over the top is what i'm essentially saying and i was satisfied mostly when it differs from certain things i mean by everything dialogue action chemistry especially when it comes to the context. I don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say here that when it comes to them visiting multiverses and going in and out and using different aspects, A24 knew how to have fun. And I did, I was on the edge of my seats. I was literally, was bursting with so much excitement each time our main protagonist was trying to find different ways to overcome her obstacles. The reason why people like me was comparing this to Multiverse of Madness is because of what is because what what Multiverse Madness has lacked that this film had showed off the true potential to. But this movie will give you a lot of good feels when it comes to the Matrix, the Wolf of Wall Street, Inception, and Kung Fu Hustle. As for the pacing of the film, the film picks up pretty quickly. It doesn't really drag at all when it comes to the film. It shows you the main character's motives, what their intentions is, and their struggles, especially when it comes to the acting. Michelle Yeoh, um, I'm going to have to say she has done great. She has done phenomenal. In fact, probably Oscar worthy. I can't see anyone has I can't see anyone do what she has done and has done better. She has not only made me love her character, but at the same time, I was pulled in by each aspect that she has literally delivered to us into this film. When it comes to her being in a drama aspect, comedy, action, I was pulled in a lot. And that's the main strength of this film. Well, with A24 in general. When, it, when, when they pull you in with certain aspects, they know when to pull things off and they know when to add things to it. When this film knows how to add action to it, 
I was literally on the edge of my seat. I was really pulled in by the action, the blood and gore, the intense creative violence to it. When it comes to the drama, I was literally pulled in by each of the believement of all the characters and the actors as well. Jamie Lee Curtis did a very good job as well. She didn't really feel like Jamie Lee Curtis in this film, though. I, I can't say that's a bad thing, but the reason why I'm saying she don't feel like Jamie Lee Curtis is because she actually acts instead of her being in the Halloween film. People know Jamie Lee Curtis because of the Halloween films being made over and over and over again. But Jamie Lee Curtis, she has done great. She has done very good. Now, by this film not dragging, this film is very quick when it comes to explaining itself. This movie is easy to understand, but it's very easy for you to get confused, if that makes any sense. What I mean by that is, is by our main character, when she gets interacted with the multiverses, there are times where she needs to interact with the multiverses of herself so she can interact with what's in front of her when it comes to combat, going through certain obstacles, because she is a regular human being like all of us. She is lacking certain things that some of us are good at when it comes to chemistry, when it comes to actually talking, when it comes to cooking, when it comes to fighting, or when it comes to reading. And what she does is, and this is what I like about this film the most, is the, is the strength of the creativity of the multiverse itself, is that... She knows that there are a lot of versions of herself out there in the multiverse. So what she does is that she picks off which version that she needs to use so she can get out of these situations. And I thought it was cool. But each time we get introduced to these versions of herself and when we get introduced with certain parts of the film, right when we begin to understand what the film is going on, we get hit even more hard with more confusing aspects. It's not a bad thing because more things get thrown at us for us to be even more involved into the film, but man, I don't think I was ready for so much of this confusion. I tried my best to understand what was going on and I did. I understood most, most things of the film. Even the action. The action will make you make you feel as if, alright, what is going on? There's a, there's a lot of what the fuck moments on this film. So, so much to the point where you just scratch your head you look at the person that's watching the film with you and you begin to literally yell at the screen when it comes to excitement, when they take certain things from films and they do it way better. She even fucking tried to fight like fucking Captain America by using a shield. And I thought that was freaking amazing. The film's greatest strength also is the concept of you knowing the character's weaknesses and them overcoming them. Now about our characters that is introduced into this film with Michelle Yeoh and Jamie Lee Curtis and other people, they come and intertwine with their multiverse versions. And each of these versions of themselves can help them out in certain predicaments, but at the same time they have problems of, them, of their own. And what I like about this film is that they also try to confront themselves when it comes to what they're facing in reality and in multiverses as well. I thought that was very well warranted and I thought it was a very good different approach and that's the main strength of A24. That's the difference is that they like to take certain aspects of certain ideas and they like to make it in their own fashion. I thought it was good. I was pulled in a lot. Does this mean that this film is perfect? No. Um, un I'm a little heartbroken because I, I would like to, uh, that's something I'd like to address is this film does good with the pacing, but it's not perfectly done. And what I mean by that is that by this movie having a main threat, they explain why this threat is imposing, why this threat is vicious and dangerous, but they don't give you any type of past of how this enemy became what they have became. They explain it and they show like a brief scene to it, but it wasn't enough for me to feel the enemy's intentions. It wasn't enough for me to feel the enemy's drive. They show a lot of fight scenes and what the enemy can do, but I was not really bought in of the full enemy's potential. I feel like if they would have took certain parts of the film that was unnecessary because there was some a, a little bit unnecessary dragging, especially when it comes to certain agendas that was forced upon us they should have taken some of that stuff off and focus on the main enemy's arc of how they became what they became so the film can be more stronger with the pacing of the antagonist and the protagonist that's the weakness of this film here and honestly marvel films are is having that same issue so i have to address this this film does great when it comes to improving what marvel needs to 
do when it comes to being true to the comics and them having an R-rated title. But just like Marvel, just like Multiverse of Madness, and when Disney even go even further, just like the Lightyear films, it suffers with the agenda that is forced upon us and it really is not necessary at the end of the day. I'ma have to give everything, everywhere, all at once, a B. I kind of ended this on a rough note. I like to start with the good and like, and I like to end with the bad. Because by me watching films, I don't want to end the film being happy and being completely blinded by me enjoying the film without me, like, without me acknowledging certain things that was literally making me prevent from enjoying this film so much and that's what I that's what I had to address so that's why I bring it up last because by me like expressing things and telling people what I like about the film and what makes these reviews strong I also need to tell people and in, 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 in literally just need to be honest and I and I kind of understand why people don't want to talk about these things on these on these films or games or animes like this especially if they're big mainstream critics because they're afraid they might get shut down. But I, but I, this is just my opinion. I feel like if you are mainstream, if you are a well-known reviewer, why would you want to lie to the viewers? You saw what I saw. You witnessed what I've witnessed. You are more of a professional critic than I am. I'm not shooting shots at anybody. But all I'm saying is, by you being bigger, the bigger you are, the bigger... The backlash you're gonna get by you being by you not being honest with your viewers and your fans. Before I go, I just have to I just have to address this. I have to let people know this. Because I get criticized. I get judged. And at the same time I get certain type of correction of my reviews and the things I talk about. But not once people told me that I have not mention things or how I have lied about certain things on my reviews that need to be mentioned so people can be aware of what's going on. And I have to admit, and I, and I have to say that because I notice a lot of critics and a lot of mainstream reviewers, the bigger they are, the more censored their voice becomes. And I'm what I mean by that is that the bigger they are, the more strict people are watching them. I'm the opposite. The bigger I am, the louder my voice is. Anyway, that's all I have to say for today. Please stay tuned for more upcoming movie reviews and videos. Hit it your way. This is Hugo, your critic teacher, and I hope you guys have a good day.